am but a daughter and I am trying to take God's job. Are you kidding me? No. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Evangelia and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I have been doing a testimony series, just giving out context on who I am and my background and it has been amazing. The response that I've gotten from you guys has been so genuine and heartfelt. Heartfelt, Just hearing how my testimony has impacted y'all, has brought some of y'all to tears, has led some of y'all to prayer, repentance, to working on things with your dad, just bringing you guys out of lukewarmness. I, it's It's been so amazing. Um, and today is our last video um, for the testimony series, just not on my channel, just for the testimony series. And we're going to be talking about depression and anxiety and all the things. And I know it's one of those topics that's kind of a little bit more heavy, but this is probably going to be one of my more joy filled videos because I love talking about this. I love talking about it for so many reasons, which we'll get into, but this is something that I pray brings freedom to a lot of y'all or clarity or understanding and revelation um, and just helps y'all process through if you've ever dealt with depression and anxiety um, and sewer side oh thoughts. I said that for YouTube purposes, but yeah. Let's get into this. I went to high school in Ghana. If you've been following my series, then you already know this. I went to high school in Ghana and I came to America for a university. All was well with me, or at least okay with me, up until winter. Winter came around, and I'm talking about like more so towards the end of my fall semester and like the duration of my spring semester of my freshman year. All was well up until that point. And once that point hit, I just remember feeling sad all the time, feeling discouraged, feeling unmotivated. I literally stopped going to classes. I stopped doing my assignments. I stopped caring. I stopped eating. I literally would go a day without eating and I would only eat if my roommate brought me food or she'd realize she'd be like, bro, you didn't eat and she'd bring me stuff. I remember crying all the time, feeling sad all the time. Just, I, I just know and remember, and I didn't have language for it at the time, but I remember just feeling the spirit of heaviness, just like, fall on me and just kind of like take me over and it's kind of embarrassing to say and it's embarrassing how ignorant I was at the time but I didn't know what was happening to me and I said that I went to high school in Ghana just to give context as to why I was so clueless and ignorant in Ghana at the time that I was living there mental health struggles mental health issues was not something talked about at all I quite literally had no context or understanding for what depression was or anxiety was I, I just really didn't know if at any point you felt sad people will tell you cheer up or it's okay or don't feel sad or especially because I went to a competitive school they tell you focus on your books you'll be okay after you pass after your exams are over and so because I had no context for what depression was I had no context for what anxiety was I literally, I'm, and I most definitely didn't know what the symptoms were. And so even though I was experiencing all these things like sadness and not being motivated and not eating and feeling discouraged and crying all the time, literally spending my days in bed, I'd spend days in bed. I literally didn't care about anything. I was experiencing all those things. I didn't know what it was until my friends would ask are you depressed and they would say it in a joking manner and i remember i'd look at them and be like depressed and i'd be like no because for me depressed just seemed so serious it seemed like so big it seemed so far out of reach for me in my mind i was just sad and i just wasn't okay i knew i wasn't acting like myself i knew things weren't well with me but to say I was depressed, I was like, whoa, that is way too much. And so my friends would ask in a joking way, some would, some wouldn't, until they kind of realized the pattern that this wasn't a week long thing, that this was happening now for months. Why is my voice going? <laughs> oh goodness, this happens when I talk a lot. But they, they, they started to get a lot more serious once they realized it was happening for months. And they started to genuinely get concerned and they'd come in and check on me. They'd be like, did you eat today? Did you get out of bed today? Just, you know, and just asking me questions. And I remember, oh man, let me see if I can find the picture. But I remember my roommate was on 
FaceTime with one of our other friends and I just had a breakdown. I remember we were talking about something and I just broke and I remember crying and I remember her being so I'm laughing now because I'm literally thinking about the picture in my head. But I remember crying and I was like hysterical. And it was honestly kind of comical, but she was scared. She was looking at me like, are you good? And genuinely the answer was no. Um, but anyways, my friends would ask, you know, are you depressed? They started to get concerned and it kind of started to bring to my attention like, is this what I'm experiencing? Is this the language that I've been looking for? Um, but I still didn't want to claim it because for me it was like, it's too big. So I went to my on-campus ministry, A-Life, right? I went to A-Life and one of the A-Life leaders at the time had a background in psychology and I think was actively working in that field. And so I remember she had asked me like how I was feeling, how I was doing. Um, and I told her like, I'm actually not doing my best. I would also like to say part of the symptoms I was experiencing, I just, I, I, I had I wasn't showering, I wasn't brushing my teeth. I would only show up for things that I knew if I wasn't there, mad people would question me. So like my on-campus ministry, I knew if I didn't go, it'd be mad questions and I didn't feel like dealing with that. So I'd show up to that. Um, but yeah, I remember going, she had asked me how I was doing and I remember telling her like, I'm not doing too well. And I told her all, everything that I had, I had been experiencing. She asked me for how long, I remember she was talking to me talking to me about it and she was like it kind of sounds like you have SAD and I'm like sad what is that and she was telling me that it was like you know seasonal I believe it's called seasonal affective disorder or seasonal affective depression I can't remember the exact term but basically it happens um I think like it's seasonal depression essentially is what it is it happens in seasons and I remember she was talking to me and she was like it would make sense because you lived in a tropical country where the sun shined all the time and you have now moved to the east coast where it is constantly overcast it's constantly gray it's constantly raining it's constantly snowing you're constantly indoors you're not like getting the amount of sun that you've been used to getting for the last five to five and a half years and I was like oh is is this what I'm experiencing like is this thing a real thing and it honestly sounded made up to me it didn't sound like it could be real and so once again I was just in this state of denial um I thought it what I was experiencing wasn't too serious I thought you know I'm just sad for the moment and I'll get over it um and I remember that spring semester I failed so bad y'all because remember I stopped going to class I stopped caring I stopped doing all of that so I just remember feeling so bad that spring semester so bad I think my GPA dropped to like a one point something or I had got a one point something it was just really bad so bad to the point where I got put on academic probation now that put the fear of the Lord a little bit in me because I didn't want my dad to find out because if my dad found out he was going to ask questions I knew if he asked questions he wouldn't have understood I just didn't feel like going through that so sophomore year comes around and I'm honestly no better I'm doing the bare minimum to get off academic probation but I'm not doing enough to actually like be passing my classes and so um I can't remember the the like the statutes for academic probation if I had a semester or two semesters or whatever but I just remember like trying to do better so that my dad wouldn't find out or if he would ask about my grades I wouldn't have to say anything he wouldn't have to ask. I just didn't feel like dealing with my dad because remember I didn't want to raise awareness to how I was feeling and to the state that I was in so um I you know was told like it's possible that you have seasonal depression and I, I I was in denial so I did nothing about it and I, I would say that that's probably one of the worst things that I did because it became comorbid okay I have a psychology degree I went to grad school for psychology so sometimes I use psych language so not comorbid it kind of paired up with anxiety um so because I did nothing about the seasonal depression I was experiencing um anxiety kind of birthed as a result of that um and not only anxiety but also suicidal ideation suicidal thoughts and I remember sometimes it would get so bad that it'd go from 
suicidal thoughts to me having a suicidal plan to me doing a suicidal gesture and then me breaking down crying and not doing it and I remember one time I had actually just told either Elijah Jonathan or Io they are always gonna come up in my testimony series because they we were all together with each other getting each other through each other's messes all through college and so I remember I had told them um, and so they'd constantly check up on me and I remember Elijah once again at the time I remember telling him like hey yeah I don't I don't even think I said it like nice I think he had just caught me in a really bad moment and like I just got really suicidal and he had caught it and he basically asked this was sophomore year by the way oh I know what happened I was already not feeling my best and I remember I had switched my major from bio pre-med track to psychology y'all I am the child of a African Ghanaian man okay who has his degree in chemical engineer I think it's chemical and mechanical engineering who is currently working as a principal data architect in his field who literally was in the village got up out the mud and is doing well for himself I switched from bio to psychology this man and I remember we had talked in high school because I told him like hey I might I think I want to do psychology and he was like no um he was like do bio for a year and if you don't like it then you can switch so I remember sophomore year comes around and I'm like okay I'm gonna do psychology and he's like no are you kidding me da -da -da, woo -woo -woo. he goes off and I remember he goes off on me while I'm in the bookstore buying my books for my new psychology classes and he what he would do is he would send me money for my books once he found out I was a psychology major I was literally in the bookstore in line ready to buy my books this man said I'm not paying for anything fend for yourself bloop hung up on me are you kidding me so now I had no money for books, no money for classes. My I just felt like my dad had abandoned me. Um, and I got so anxious, but also I just felt like life was purposeless and life was pointless. And it was that moment that I had, I think Elijah, Jonathan and Io had found out because I got so suicidal. I don't know why that particular moment drove me to that point, but I remember just wanting to unalive myself. Like I, it was so, it was so serious. Um, and as I talk about like what got me through, I do want to mention that, you know, I know that this is a sensitive topic and that no two ways of a solution will work for everybody. What I'm saying may help you get some understanding for yourself and bring you to a solution, but my solution may not be your solution. And if you genuinely have a chemical imbalance, like it is not a crime for you to go and get medicated. It doesn't mean that you have any less faith in God. It doesn't mean that God doesn't see you as his child. It doesn't mean that you are a broken Christian. It doesn't mean that you lack faith. It does not mean any of that. Um, but yeah, I just want to mention that because I know when people talk about depression, they can kind of just do the whole pray it away and it'll go away. But that's not always the case because I know for me, that wasn't the case. I prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing shifted my depression state, but that wasn't a reflection on God. It wasn't a reflection on his, in a, on his ability to be faithful. It didn't make him any less faithful. It just made me realize like, okay, he's trying to take me through a process of something and I need to catch what it is. I strongly believe in two things. I believe some things are caught and some things are taught. And I believe that some things are cast out and some things are mastered. And so for some people, these depressive thoughts are purely demonic oppression. And you may need to get prayed for, go through deliverance, get the devil cast out of you, and you'll be go you'll be great. For some people, depression is something that they have to master. They have to learn their symptoms. They have to get medicated. They have to find solutions and things that work with them. But none of that is outside of God. You getting the devil cast out of you and you mastering your depression with God and doing it in faith, none is higher than the other and none makes you any less of a Christian than the other. I just wanted to put that um, disclaimer out there. But yeah, so I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed um, and nothing shifted for me. And 
it's honestly kind of surprising because especially for where I was in my walk with God but it didn't make me doubt God's goodness in any way it just made me understand that there was a process that he really wanted to take me through and that there was a lesson for me to learn um yeah which is so crazy for me to have that understanding at that point in time but you know Holy Spirit the Lord does what he wants to do um but yeah for me when it came to this depression thing I had to fight it in the spiritual and I had to fight it in the natural I literally had to do both I could not um I tried just doing the praying thing I tried getting prayed for I tried getting the devil I, I literally tried going I tried all the spiritual things and I year would come out like year after year after year would come and those depressive symptoms would hit like clockwork and it was so frustrating for me because I knew what I was experiencing by that point in time because if you remember junior year I started going to therapy all of that um but I knew that these symptoms would come and I knew that what they were but I I didn't have a solve for it I didn't have a solution and it started to make me so frustrated because it's like okay what's the what good is it for me to know that this is coming what good is it for me to know what I'm experiencing if I can't do anything about it and I would try my hardest I would try my well best y'all I would I was really trying my hardest I'm like okay I'm going to you know if I feel myself getting sad, I'm going to try and be happy. Um, if I feel myself getting unproductive, I'm going to do the opposite. None of that was working. Um, and so I had in the natural, I had to learn my symptoms. Learning my symptoms was great, but it wasn't everything for me. It was one of those things that genuinely could not be cast out and it had to be mastered because I believe that it could be a demon, right? But after things you've gone through deliverance and you are still troubled, this is something that you genuinely have to master. And I know I feel like it feels like or sounds like I'm beating a dead horse, but it's just one of those things that I really want us to grasp because I don't want us to feel broken or failed or like inadequate in some way because or like God isn't good because we're going through these mental health struggles and we're praying for it to go away and we're praying for it to disappear and we're still going through it. So back to my solution. So in the natural, I had to learn my symptoms, but I also had to learn things that helped me. So for me, things that helped me was being around community. Like I had to genuinely, if I felt, and these are things that I learned with time, but for me, when I would feel these depressive symptoms, I started snitching on myself, bro. I was also one of those people that thought that they could do everything on their own. So once I would feel these depressive symptoms come on, I would immediately snitch on myself and I'd hit up a friend or two or three or four because I really had a great community around me and I'd be like hey I'm feeling like this can you come over they'd come over in a heartbeat they'd sit with me they'd talk with me they'd eat with me they'd laugh with me we'd go out and do things we'd do work together and being around my community truly helped because what it did was not allow me to stay in bed and when I was staying in bed I was left to my thoughts and that was no good so community really helped me. Now, this is another thing that helped me, which is a natural thing, but it was vitamin D. Y'all, I was taking them vitamin D pills because I needed it. I needed it, I needed it, I needed it. And if you are a seasonal depression girly or boy, we don't discriminate here. Vitamin D is just one of those things that you're gonna need to take during um, those seasons where you feel like those symptoms are coming on. Another thing that helped me was the presence of God. Ooh, okay. I, I, how do I want to say this okay I was at church and my pastor basically up uh, so it's my bishop and pastor Bishop George Cornelius Seawright and Pastor Mary Ruth Seawright love them down Mwah, you're amazing abundant life in New Brunswick New Jersey if you're looking for a church anyways I remember being in a service and Pastor Mary was going off as she typically does and she was saying she knows that for her and her family depression and a spirit of heaviness was a thing that um it kind of just like runs generation in, in their generations and for her she knows that she she kind of has a propensity to lean towards that or it's gonna it's easy for it to come on her and i remember her saying when she feels that spirit of heaviness coming on her she puts on a garment of praise and she started shouting y'all she started dancing and i remember looking at her in awe and in curiosity like huh that's scripture but you kind of made it practical and 
it seems so simple but for me it was also so profound and so it sounds crazy y'all but if i was like by myself and i would feel like which is this these waves of depression i'd feel the spirit a spirit of heaven is just like kind of crushing me i would <laughs> i would literally put on praise break music y'all and dance i i'm so serious i would put on praise break music and i start shouting and i start thanking god and i start praising god and it seems so silly i know how it sounds but it's something that genuinely worked for me i would start dancing and i'd be like god you are good god i love you you love me i am chosen i'm a royal priesthood you have not forgotten me you like i would literally dance i said i'll thank you for this i thank you for life i thank you for a call i thank you for a purpose i thank you that you know me i thank you that you know my name i thank you for waking my friends up thank you for keeping my family thank you thank you that i'm still here thank you that i'm still alive and i would dance and i would just focus on god and i would think about god <laughs> and sometimes in the middle of me dancing i would start crying y'all i sound crazy but i would start crying and i remember i would feel so free in those moments and so i can't emphasize enough but the presence of god and using praise as a weapon unmatched un freaking matched talking things through helped me out um talking things through with my friends because the thing is when you are going through like when 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 you're when you struggle with depression um and then also you're an overthinker anyway or you're just having these suicidal thoughts and you're left to your thoughts you become your own echo chamber and the only person you have to bounce thoughts off of if you're by yourself is yourself and at that point you are you do not have great judgment you are not the person to be bouncing thoughts off of and so if you're bouncing thoughts off of yourself that's not going to lead anywhere good and so having people that i can talk things through with was so helpful for me working out was helpful for me i think it releases like what endorphins one of the one of the things that make you happy um and then also just going outside and getting sun when i can i literally had to fight this in the spiritual and in the natural because all these natural things that i'm talking about talking it out hanging out with friends vitamin d going to the sun none of that works outside of faith none of that works outside of having the faith that god will see you through that god will keep you and that god will deliver you that god is faith like none of that works outside of that because you can think that you can do it in your own strength and that you have the solution you it all makes common sense but you don't have wisdom until you have the fear of the lord and so wisdom only comes from god so you can think all of this works but if you're doing it in your own strength you're not if you don't get think by if you're doing it and you think it's by your own wisdom it it's not gonna work out for you um and so yeah other things that i would do is i would speak scripture over myself y'all I remember like the word be I told y'all this already but the word truly had to become my best friend now this happened later on in life but um when I would be overwhelmed with depressive thoughts and the enemy would just fill my head with lies you're worthless there's no call over your life you have no purpose nobody loves you nobody cares about you if you were to unalive yourself nobody would be bothered maybe then they would care about you everybody is more important than you everybody is more loved than you everybody gets more to ah, man, man when i tell you the enemy used to just fill my head with lies and the thing is for so long i accepted these lies and so it was starting to build these strongholds in my mind and just these towers of lies and these structures of lies in my mind that I started to dwell in I really started to dwell in and so I had to understand and recognize that when these thoughts come in they are a lie from the enemy and I have to actively say that and fight that and it was it's hard I'm not gonna say it's easy I'm not gonna say it's easy especially when you've been believing them for so long but what I had to start doing is when these thoughts would come, I had to start taking them captive. I could not allow them to go rampant. I could not allow them to just run on and on and on and grow into these. I couldn't do that. I would get these thoughts. I'd have to take them captive and I have to say, this is the enemy and this is a lie. And I'd have to speak truth to combat that lie. And once you have a tower of lies in your mind, a stronghold that you've believed in and started to dwell in, 
when you take those thoughts captive and you acknowledge that they are alive, that they are from the enemy and that they're from the pit of hell and that there is no truth in them and you start to replace them with the truth of the word and what God says about you, you start to knock down each brick of a stronghold that has been formed. You start to knock down each lie uh, 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 that, ha that has been built up in your mind, the, the structure of lies. You start to knock it down brick by brick, stone by stone until there's nothing left and then you start to build a new tower a new structure built on the word of god and built on what he says about you i had to constantly ask god who do you say i am what do you say about me because i've heard what the enemy has to say about me i heard what i have to say about myself but what do you say about me i had to build that tower of truth in my mind and i remember for a season um this song was like my anthem bro it was um I can't remember who, it, who it's by, but I'll probably like put it somewhere here or here. But it was, I am who he says I am. He is who he says he is. I'm defined by your promises. Something, it was something along those lines, but I really had to rehearse that. Like I played that song constantly because for so long I believed the enemy and what he said about me and not in what God said about who I was. Um, and so that's really what helped me with my depression. But I know I mentioned that anxiety came into play because when I was told like, hey, you may be battling with depression, I was like, no, I'm not. And so anxiety just wormed its way into my life. And I would also say it's not only because I didn't deal with like the depression that I was experiencing. I, I don't think I was always like this. I can't remember being always like this, but uh, at some point in time, I became a control freak um, and this is not a good thing this is not something that you want to take pride in like oh I have to be in control oh, I'm a control freak oh I got OCD that is not something you want to take pride in at all it's not it don't please God and I'll explain why but um yeah I remember junior year I told you this I started going to counseling and I think maybe this might have been my senior year actually um, but I remember I had, I had gone to a new counselor because my old counselor was too far. And so I started going to a new counselor. We had our session or whatever, and I had just explained to her how, was, how I was feeling. I was explaining how at some point in time I'd have like heart palpitations and I'd just get nervous. I'd get anxious. My hands would sweat. Um, like I would just start freaking out, like and overthinking and like, it feel like my heart was trying to beat itself out my chest and I would feel like I'm shaking and I couldn't calm myself down no matter what I did. And I was telling her how things have to go a certain way and if they don't, I'm going through all the things with her. Um, and she goes, oh, it sounds like you got anxiety. And I'm like, here, here's somebody else go, bro. I, oh my goodness. I'm like, here goes somebody else trying to tell me what I have. Um, but I think I got annoyed because there's a stigma around mental health. And I think it's gotten a lot better. I will say it's gotten a lot better, but in college, I think it was kind of still on the come up. Even, and even if it wasn't still on the come up, okay, I don't want to say it like that. I'm saying there not being a stigma around mental health was on the come up. But I think even if that wasn't the case, I think just me personally, because I didn't have too much knowledge and experience with mental health issues, I was like, how do I go from knowing nothing to dealing with these two things? And so I was really annoyed. Like I literally went from nothing to having depression and anxiety, from knowing nothing to, to wrestling with depression and anxiety. Um, and it's so crazy because I used to delight and take pride in the fact that I was a control freak, not knowing that I'm co-signing um, my struggle with anxiety, which is so crazy, not knowing that it's a whole sin. And I'm gonna explain to you why anxiety in particular, how I was struggling with it was a sin. Um, and it's because ultimately anxiety insults God. Anxiety is fear of the future, okay? It can be extreme worry about a situation, but psychologically, most the definition behind anxiety is a fear of the future. And when I have a fear of the future, especially after God has already told me that he's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And especially after he's, you know, told me that I shouldn't have to fear. Um, perfect love casts out all fear, especially after I, the word says all those things. 
I'm essentially telling him that he doesn't know what he's doing. And there's this chapter in Matthew, I actually can't remember, but if you have a Bible that has subtitles, it, it talks about, I think like the cure for anxiety. I think that's the subtitle. I can't remember what it is. But when you read that scripture and you think about how he is caring for birds that don't got no soul he's caring for trees he's caring for a lily he's doing all the things for things that have no purpose can't quite love him intimately and have no soul and he's taking care of them and making sure they're always taken care of how much more me you know what i'm saying um and when i was wrestling with anxiety essentially what i was telling him when i would struggle with that fear of the future is you don't know how to be a good lord you don't know how to do your job you don't know how to make sure that my future is going to be set up and essentially i can do a better job and so i'm trying to do a better job by taking control of my future um transgressions right transgression um if you look up the definition of it it just means to step in front of god um and when you wrestle with control and you try to control things instead of allowing god to just do what he does and when you say i want to go my way instead of your way essentially you're stepping in front of him and you're saying ah take the back seat god i got this and so what you've done is you've transgressed you've sinned and you've displayed distrust um towards him and so for me anxiety in that way was you know i'm starving sorry y'all that was my phone but anxiety in that way was just a sin against God I literally was quite I quite literally was always telling him you don't know what you're doing like you can't be a good Lord so let me be Lord I had taken the position of Lord over my life which is so crazy when you think about it and I began to realize a trend in my life when I would start to think about when I would um, when I would feel most anxious and the trend I realized in my life that when I wasn't in prayer and I wasn't in my word I would feel the most anxious i would feel the most anxious because i was not reinforcing my trust in god and i was not getting intimate and reminding myself of my of his character of who he is and of his goodness i wasn't um and all it did was give me a reason to doubt because now i'm leaning on my own strength and if i'm leaning on my own strength i have every reason to doubt myself my track record with myself is not infinity to none i have dropped the ball and failed multiple times but god's track record with me is infinity to none he has never failed me not once and he's not going to start and i know we hear that all all the time god's never failed me and he won't start now but if you think about it he quite literally orchestrated your life up until the point that you are watching this video and he has not failed you once you have gone through some things you have wrestled with some things you have gone through hard times but if you look for god he is there if you seek him you will find him and if you start to talk to him and ask him god why is this happening what are you teaching me what is the lesson in this what what why is all of this happening you will realize that all things work together for the good of those who love the lord and he is doing something for you and you realize that his track record really is infinity to none and that he has actually never failed you and so i had to understand that i didn't create myself i had to come to that realization i did not create myself and so i was never intended to manage myself i did not have creative rights over myself i did not have user rights over myself because i didn't own myself and i'm not designed to guide my own life and when i would try and take control and guide my own life that's when i would feel con i feel the most anxious when i wasn't in prayer hearing what god wants to do with my life hearing god's next steps for my life hearing where god wants to take me hearing how the holy spirit wants to guide me when i'm not in my word reinforcing what god is saying and all of that i i i had every reason to doubt and i just started trying to take control over my own life and god guide my own self it was too much pressure pressure i was never designed to have pressure i was never designed to handle it just it it, it wasn't meant for me it was meant for god and because i was trying to take god's job obviously i'm feeling the pressure of doing a god-sized job as a measly human i am but a daughter and i am trying to take god's job are you kidding me no of course i would feel anxious it's just i'm operating in a position i have no business operating in and so i realized that this was a pattern in my life until one day the lord asked me are you finally willing to release all this control 
And I was like, hmm, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? And I realized that I was suffering from anxiety and fear of the future because I was apart from the one who orchestrated my future, who ordered my steps, and who designed my future, who was designed my life, who literally thinks about me constantly, and who like who knows me better than I know myself, who's the author and the finisher of my faith, who is the God of the in-betweens. He was like, are you finally willing to release all the control? Do you realize that you can't do this job? Do you realize that you're not meant to do this job? Are you finally willing to trust me and trust that I can do a better job than you and that I can actually be God and be Lord? Are you ready? Like, are you ready? And it was, <laughs> and anxiety is honestly another one of those things that the Lord had to help me master. It wasn't cast out. It wasn't, it, it, gen, it, it genuinely wasn't. It was literally one of those things that the Lord had to bring me through a process where I had to just master it. And so what I started to do is when I would have anxious thoughts, the question I would immediately ask myself was, what is going on even jelly? I literally will, oh, and even to this day, this is something that I do. But when I experience anxious thoughts, I take a moment and I pause and I say, where in your life do you feel like things are going wrong, that you are not trusting God? Where are you grasping for control when you should be releasing it? Even Jelia, where are you grasping for control when you should be releasing it? And I realized that I would tend to grasp for control when I felt like other parts of my life weren't going well, or I felt like things weren't doing what they should be doing and when I was doubting God and so to this day I constantly ask myself if I well not constantly anytime I have an anxious thought I say okay God where am I grasping for control where I should be releasing it where do I where in my life do I feel like things are in disarray and I begin to process that with the Lord I begin to share with him my feelings but more importantly I begin to I pray for trust and I know when we feel like we don't I, I really believe that we have a problem as a generation with understanding the power of prayer I really believe that when we feel like we don't have something that we're able to attain it and get it by our own strength if I feel like I don't have trust in God and I know I used to think this way and I'm 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 sure a lot of you do too or have thought in this way but when you don't have trust in God or when you lack trust in God you think it's your job to do X, Y, and Z, and A, B, C, and this, that, and the third, to gain trust in God, as if prayer can't solve a problem. As if saying, God, I don't trust you. Would you show me how to trust you? Would you create situations in my life where I would have to look to you for an answer? Lord, would you increase my trust in you? Would you break my will? Would you help me to bend my, uh, knit my heart to yours? Would you bend my will, Lord, and let your will be done in my life? We act as if the power of prayer does not work. And so um, when I would ask God, like, okay, where do I feel like my life is, you know, kind of up in flames right now? Or where do I feel like I'm grasping for control where I should be releasing it? He would show me. I would say, okay, God, how can I trust you in this situation? How can I give this to you? How can I look to you and not worry about this and not get anxious about this and not take control not take the reins and not step into your position and a lot of those answers came as i prayed and the holy spirit would give me the next step and i'd obey and then he'd give me the next step and then i'd obey like that's where a lot of my salute my deliverance came from and you know romans i believe it's 12 2 or 1 but it talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Deliverance, part of being, being renewed in your mind is deliverance. When you start to take on new thought patterns, new thinking patterns, new mindsets and new solutions, instead of operating in old ways, you've gone through the deliver gone through deliverance you don't need to roll around on a carpet you don't need to throw up now i'm not saying that that doesn't happen because it happens it's happened to me it's real sometimes things need to be cast out of you but sometimes your mind simply being renewed is deliverance and so i just always had to remind myself like god you really haven't failed me yet and you're not going to start you haven't failed at all and you're not going to start with me i am not big enough for you to start failure with me it's just not possible it's not it's not possible and so hopefully this video in some way brought you 
revelation understanding peace it has led you to think in a new way it has opened your mind to some things it's answered some questions i don't know but i pray that this video blessed you i love talking about this because it's one of those things that i feel like there's so much unhealthy conversation around where people are telling you you need to pray this away and if you don't pray it away then you know you're a bad christian you lack faith you're not good enough but we're missing the point that god works in the practicals um some things are cast out and some things are mastered and depression is darkness pills don't make you a failure and having to take pills doesn't make you a failure and not having to take pills doesn't make you better it all depends on how God is processing you. Same thing with anxiety. Having to take pills doesn't make you a failure and not having to take pills doesn't make you any um, better. It's all about how God is processing, processing you through this situation and how he's leading you to solution. The Bible is a solution. Praise is a solution. Prayer is a solution. Community is a solution. The presence of God is a solution, y'all. But also the practicals are a solution, the, not the practicals outside of faith, the practicals within the realm of faith, within the realm of understanding that God has ultimate control over this. Not your pills, not your 10 step process and, and not, not, not any of that, but God. Um, and same thing with anxiety. It's a fear of the fear of the future. It's a need for control. Release control. Give it up. Give up all your entitlement to control, thinking that God hasn't done a good job and so you need to take over. I would recommend that where you feel like he hasn't done a good job, that you reassess that situation with him in prayer, believing that he will talk to you and he will give you an answer if you let him. I'm so serious about this. But I pray that you would recognize that your fail i pray that you would recognize that recognizing your frailty is a solution because once you recognize that you understand your need and desperate need for god and you allow him to be god and take the position of lord in your life so this is the end of my testimony series i'm so happy i ended with this video hopefully this has been a blessing to you i it's been a blessing to me um and even though it's the end of our testimony series, there's still so much more that I'm going to be doing on this YouTube channel. I'm going to be doing a new series called the Christian Starter Pack for people who are new to the faith or who feel like they're lacking some foundational principles in the faith. I'm also going to be doing vlogs. Y'all, I am a whole missionary and I'm going to be going to Atlanta literally tomorrow. It's 3.52 a.m. I got to be up or I got to be at the house at 11 a.m. So we're doing a travel vlog. So next week is going to be my travel vlog to Atlanta. I'm probably going to do a vlog for all the work we're doing in Atlanta. I'm going to Kenya later on in May. I'll vlog that. I'm going to Ghana in September. I'll, so just let, I'm going to just let y'all know there's going to be vlogs. The Christian Starter Pack series is going to start soon. Um, and then also just a quick fun life update and a house tour because I realized that y'all don't have that. So that is everything from me. I love you guys, but as much as I love you, God loves you more. Mwah. Ooh. Make sure you like, you comment, and not only subscribe, I'm not going to end the video this time, y'all. Make sure you put on your post, I think it's the no post notifications. Turn that on so that when I post, y'all can see it. But yes, I love you all, but as much as I love you, God loves you more. Bye.